Those I fans are awesome. I don't. They're crazy. I just, know, I just know. I read the subreddit. I read the room around Philadelphia. And there's a bunch of dick bags and just absolutely trash and players, dude. Yeah. People yeah, are calling up. That everywhere. People are calling up the uh, WIPN or whatever, and they're absolutely trashing and beads still. Yeah, that dude, make that's sense. the. Guys, it's a special episode 11, 11, 11. So we're talking about the Philly fan base, right? What Danny Green had said. You're just, you're just not here long enough to tell us what we are as a fan base. Um, but then we're getting everything out, Sixers. So everything and anything, one slide, all on the table. You know the rules, one bite, one slide. So uh, get it out on the table. Uh, and then the Eagles defensive deep dive on the defensive side of the depth chart. So we're going to break it down by each position group today. All right, not all at once, 40 minutes, so we can give you guys some time to go to each chapter, each segment of the video and check out, you know, what position group you want us, you want to hear about. Um, but that's how we're going to do it today. So uh, as a quick intro, since we don't have much time based on Jackson being late to the pod. And again, also do want to remind everybody, he did not wish me happy birthday. 26 <laughs> now, the benefits drop. It's not a great year. Okay, It's um, in his name and we all forgot it. And, and speaking of <laughs> not speaking we, of names, not we all. Just, just you two. It's, it's, in, it's in my name, yeah. Um, but spe- speaking of names, there's something that I have in common with Jason Kelsey. Should I say Kelsey? It's actually pronounced Kels, but no, it's not. apparently growing up, his dad, you know, people called him Kelsey, and he just lived with it, and he was just kind of being lazy. Is it actually? And uh, he was just like, all right, yeah, just everybody just call me Kelsey. It's fine. So it really is just Kelsey. It really is just Kelsey, but it is pronounced Kels. Similar to kind of, you know, similar to me. You know, it's Caputi. Oh my God, dude! This Everybody pew, says Caputi. Pew, Caputi. Pew, 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 pew. Your name's Caputi, uh, and his nice. name's Kelsey, dude. So, uh, yeah. me, and J- me and Jason Kelsey, one That's the same, basically, basically the same guy. Um, all right, let's jump right into it, though. So, basically chilly Philly, guy. chilly, chilly Philly. Uh, is this it's cold little, in the streets? Little, it's it's brutal. It's not cold there. at all. It's not cold at all. It's it's actually it's actually always sunny here. So. Here's my one thing, right? We're better than a lot of people think. And I know it's almost like the news in the media. Like they pick out the worst possible things to pick apart about the Philly fan base. And they see none of the good. Because unless you're in it, uh, you don't know it. So, you know, we, we've we supported the process for five years. We probably supported guys like Ben Simmons and Carson more or longer than we even should have. Um, we supported them in their lows and their highs, you know, part of their declines. And that's the thing. Ben's probably going to get right back to where he where he was, you know, before this uh, playoff little stint, little decline that he had. But we've been there through the thick and thin, right? So it's to say for Danny Green to come out and basically say, "You guys have to change. You got to change this whole mantra of being the cold Philly, like brutal, you know, criticize too much kind of fan base." Um, I, you know, listeners, go out and listen for yourself because you know. Reading it, even reading it from the article, just reading the, the quote, it sounds a lot better. It starts off his response to John Clark on his takeoff podcast. It starts off like that standard answer, just, you know, fellow teammate protecting his other teammate, you know, protecting his teammate. But it turns into this whole thing where he kind of expands on it a little bit more and, and says, you know, Philly's this cold fan base and you guys need to kind of change around, you know, that mantra, that, you know, uh, vibe you're kind of giving off to the rest of, you know, I guess the Sixers and I guess the rest of the, you know, sports world. But, you know, you, you got to be here longer to understand it. I mean, we've been through it all, you know, the process and everything. Um, I just I just well, don't like don't like this take. I, I think you could just kind of go home with this one and, you know. It's bold for a player who's only been here for one year. Right. Um, and also yeah. for a fan base that when Ben was having his worst free throw troubles in the playoffs, like literally stood up and cheered him on at the line. Yeah. You know, we had, we had people seriously, like, you know, trying to give them form tips. Maybe not the best thing, but, like, the whole stadium was behind them there. And it's moments like that where it's like, that's actually unusual for the fan base. I mean, if you're a professional athlete and you can't handle yeah. getting booed when you're, you know, playing bad, regardless of how good you are as a team, you know, whether you're in first place or not, then, you know, bitch made. 
<laughs> I, I personally, like, deal with it, dude. I personally think he went, it. he went too far when he just said when he mentioned the thing about like us being one of the worst fan bases in the league. That's what he said. Like yeah. he literally said that word for word. Like we have yeah. this. People like, like to substitute worse for passionate. Yeah, and I'm like, what do you mean worse? <laughs> like, we're, like we sell out like every single one of Elaborate. our stadiums on every team. Like, like what do you mean? How are we the so, worst fan base? <laughs> exactly. So direct direct quote from that, right? I hope that things turn for him in the city of Philly. So where they don't have that mantra as fans of being cold, rough, and one of the worst in the league. Right. I mean, like, I, <laughs> I mean, okay. So that's that's what you're saying. Like that's what you know us as. But you've been with us for a year. Can you at least like say from your experience that that's really not the case? Like you should defend us a little bit here too. I mean, you are still a Sixer. I feel I, like I just yeah. I feel like you guys are all delusional Philly fans, no, dude. No, no, Philly no. fans are a bunch of dick bags, dude. We ran Paul's out of town. Paul's got hurt. Fultz got hurt. We were like, we don't believe you have an injury. Fuck you. You're out of town. <laughs> we're running Ben Simmons out of town. Fultz was Carson failed by the organization, dude. We all hate McNabb. It's like if you're not Brian Dawkins, we're going to hate you. And, and 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 then I feel like our reaction to his take is even proving his point. Where he's like, I think you guys are too harsh of a city. You just got to be nice to the players. We're like, okay, Danny Green. Fuck you. Get out of Philly then. <laughs> was we're, 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 not, we're, we're not literally... even saying get out of Philly. He literally critiques us and we're like, all right, you know, stay with me. <laughs> like, okay, screw no, you, you, dude. But I couldn't support you but, anymore. But, but Danny's, it's, all, it's all good when Danny's we run Carson out of town, though, right, Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'll, 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 I'll admit that I'm part of the dick bags, but oh, how the turntables! <laughs> but at least I'm, at least I'm not Look, Danny, it. Danny's too green. Like Flay said, he's he's been <laughs> here for a year. He's 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 been here for a year. He can't he can't say stuff like this. He doesn't have like he has the and a good year, and out. a good year too, dude. Like imagine the, yeah. the process years, like the actual process years. Yeah, dude, we weren't yeah. hating in the process years because the. Because no, the we were just bandwagon fun. fans that hate yeah. weren't uh, actually following the team back then. Yeah, they had no idea what they were talking about. Because and here's the thing: he's acting like he's been here forever, but it's sounding it's coming off as stupid because he clearly hasn't been here forever and doesn't know like what the fan base is really like. I mean, yeah, I, how, I mean, you got to read the room a little bit better when Ben has you know number one foul coach you know on the camera helping him out in the playoffs against the Hawks, like you know cheering him on, when- have the whole stadium going. When we're the number one seed in the East and we friggin' don't even make it to the conference final, like it's embarrassing, and and, like, and, and it's a lot of it is on to be upset, and all and a lot of it is on one guy, like and like we should be pretty fucking pissed about it, like. I just think you guys are you guys are saying like yes we are the most passionate fan base which is true but there's two sides to that coin like when we love you we love you more than like almost any other yeah. city does but when we hate you. We fucking are absolute assholes, and we like it's, make your it's life. It's not like we hate you. It's like no. when you aren't meeting expectations, think, yeah, we get, let you, you know about it. You get we let you know about you, it. A little more than any other. It's not like we went to Ben Simmons' house and like threatened to kill him. Like we freaking we just we just booed him. Like it wasn't like a crazy thing. But but Jackson, how do you really know? Like go to any other city. I mean, you know, if a, if a player's playing bad and he should be, you know, meeting or going above and beyond. Like how do you know that's not happening in Chicago? The, in a Bears game. Those fans I don't, are awesome. I, don't, They're crazy. I, just know, I just know. I read the subreddit. I read the room around Philadelphia. And there's a bunch of dick bags and just absolutely trash and players, dude. Yeah. People yeah, are calling up. Everywhere. People are calling up the WYPN or whatever. And they're absolutely yeah. trashing and beads still. Yeah, that dude, make that's sense. The, literally the official hate station of Philadelphia sports. Like well, anyone who, to be honest, as a listener, I I haven't heard a lot of Embiid hate. Maybe one of those random callers. It's very no one gets very rare. Saying, yeah, there's just the no. occasional lunatic. There's no yeah. Uh, yeah. And beat, yeah, but like, you're gonna get that in any city. city. Yeah. Look, all I'm saying is when we have places like Tony Luke's Gym Steaks and Abner's <laughs> and University City Cheese Steaks and Pizza, uh, not sponsored. <laughs> you know, it's it's a good city. Like, you said that like we else. were sponsors. <laughs> that's, yeah. such a, that's such an out of nowhere third <laughs> like cheese steak place. I feel like you are. Yeah, he's throwing a little Drexel. Oh, are you getting paid on the table, yeah. booty? You don't even. Yeah. 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 Listen. Listen, I just want to take people away from the tourist traps, okay? And and if it's Pat's or Gino's, I get you have to try it once. Jim's is the place to be, hands Jim's down. Yeah. Wiz wit, get it, and uh, move on. Um, but listen, passion, yeah, Jackson, do we is passion like uh, craziness for us? Probably, but <laughs> if, if you were if you were a player in any professional league, where would you want to play? I don't know, dude. If I was good, Philly. If not. Not Philly. <laughs> not Philly. <laughs> well, then I guess the answer is be good. <laughs> no, but that's not. Here, here's the thing, though. We so, that that's different, though. Like I think you're wrong about that. If we if you're a bad player and you come to Philly and you're just like a bench guy, 
We don't even care about you. We don't even talk about you. We don't. We, we talk about the players that are good that are playing bad. That's who we hate. So, all right. So let I'm me. Just re- saying, let, I'm just saying. Yeah. But like, we literally were Wensylvania, and then he had one bad season, and now we <laughs> literally yeah. trashed his life and kicked him out. Like, oh, he finally admits oh, it. Well, one bad season. Oh my god. Oh, it all comes I out. I was a part of it. But like, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. He Reactive also. To be fair, remember, Brits, it was on one us. of the worst seasons. I know, so I know, I know. But Jackson. I'm not saying he had great seasons. Before but that. Jackson. Season. Jackson, right, listen, Jackson listen. likes to say he didn't like him at all. Like, like even like after 2017. All right, listen, let's, okay. let's, let's let's reel it in. One, it was the worst season like ever. Also, <laughs> he he gave up on us, so that's the reason why I, I yeah, kicked him did. out. He did. Uh, I was his biggest Carson fan, which is sad because I was um, yeah, I was a huge fan. But but listen, I, let me rephrase the question real quick, and then we'll move on to the next topic. We'll really get into you know the stuff we're going to talk about today. But do we mentally break the players that are good, or should professional sports players come in and not you know be able to kind of put the wall up and and kind of like because if you're playing well you're not, like like Jackson said like we've all said we're not going to be booing we're not going to be ruining your life we're not going to be shutting you out of town but do we mentally break players as a city yes absolutely we mentally break players Week Can once. You how you come into the city you come into mentally the city you're like, players you're is that like, on the I'm player or the city I'm though good and I'm going to do good and then like you do bad a couple games and then like everybody on the turnpikes like Hey, on the <laughs> you're gonna miss this exit like you miss every freaking shot. It's, it's like just stop attacking me, dude. Let me just... so, so Jackson's saying it's on the city. I think me and Flair are saying it's on the player not to be that weak mentally. Yeah, that's I agree, dude. Yeah, and there's a there's a De La Soul lyric that says everyone cools off from being hot. It's whether you can handle being cold or not. And if you can't handle being cold, lyric. then you gotta really be not resilient, the place for you, man. Yeah, dude. If first Listen. of all, we didn't even break Ben Simmons until after the season. Like you said, we were cheering him on on every free throw that he took, even when he was like. Over it really six wasn't at the time. until he passed up that dunk. Yeah, that was literally the turning moment. Of okay, that you're saying thing, yeah. But... Okay, th- there was one point in the playoffs where everybody cheered for him when he made his free throws. There was also like 500 points during the playoffs where everybody, all anybody in Philadelphia was talking about was how bad Ben Simmons was. Because he was. <laughs> because <laughs> because <laughs> what the it, fucking cheering doesn't Jackson, make up. Jackson, what are that. They, what are they going to talk about? What are we going to talk about as a podcast? When Ben Simmons I mean, is shooting 25% from the free throw line in the playoffs, it's going to be talked about. Sorry. Philadelphia's <laughs> addiction to like, this hot take media where we trash our players, it does have a negative effect. I don't know. That's all I'm saying. All right. We we can remove. There but is an such opportunity an to remove the hot take media because, yeah, because even when Ben was playing good at some points, people would say, oh, he's not the, you know, give he's him credit. Where, where, give him but credit where credit's due. But at the same time, we got to talk about the things that are happening. Hold on, I don't, I don't want to like keep going back to this, but one thing, it, like, one thing I want to say about this, you have, you have to realize Ben Simmons was historically bad from the free throw line. It's not even like it's not like he was just bad, like kind of bad, like like, like disappointed us. He was historically bad. Like yes, and so that's why we're gonna we 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 got on him so much. Also, Carson historically bad. Yeah, like, they were historically year. bad, but so, were we historically mad? I mean, maybe, but no, like, uh, no, that's just average. Isn't, average yeah, but uh, isn't that like yeah. supposed to like come together? Like, if he's historically bad, we should be historically mad. The stars align. Like, it's not like these guys are like going out there and like Carson throws like one interception or something, and like we like literally want to like freaking run the guy out of town. He had a worst season ever, and then but, and, I, and then Ben Simmons had the worst free, uh, postseason free throw percentage ever, or like second worst. Okay, right, so and, I got. Yeah. I, I gotta yeah. say about this: this whole situation is historically sad. But can we turn it around and get uh, Dame Lillard out of it? Historically rad. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so so listen. The reason why I you know put place a lot of the hate on like like a Ben and a Carson is more on the other half of you know not the performance part but just giving up and like with Carson it was they handle it two different ways actually but still in the same token you know Carson radio silent. Um, Brits needs a 24 ounce apparently, um, but yeah, Car- Carson goes silent, right? And it's kind of like, dude, just say at least say something. Give us something to work with. Give us your feelings on like how this season went. Are you with us? Are you not with us? Like where are you? Go-? He gave up. He just completely gave up. With Ben, it's kind of like in this love hate relationship of, oh, you guys don't know basketball, and they hate me. They love me not. You know, it's like, dude, just go out and play, and we'll we'll support you. I mean, I was at one of the Sixers games in the playoffs this year against the Wizards. There was no ounce of booing in that stadium the entire time. So as much as the media comes in with all this hate constantly, we get it. It's out there. 
you know, when he's playing that game, it, you don't hear it. And, you know, we, we lift these guys up, I think, longer than we should. And that's kind of the story that I want to paint. You know, um, we're, we're not as bad as it seems, I, I think. I think people take the bad, they take the lunatics, and they put them in the spotlight. And then, you know, that's, what, think- that's where the story comes from. Yeah, and I think overwhelmingly, like, there's a lot of normal people in Philadelphia who are just supportive, like, of the team and everything. But and I think in every city there are mean lunatics. I just think in other cities it's probably like two or three percent of the fan base, and Philadelphia is probably like fifteen percent of the fan base, which is absolute <laughs> okay. insanity. You're just up in the majority, okay, <laughs> or the minority, okay. I, All right, I guys, see you. Let's, let's uh, steer so this back to. With, uh, with that said, let's talk about the Sixers. The then. Sixers, which we basically so, just did. Um, slide to the right. Um, so what do you guys want to talk about? We got, we got the Sixers here. I have some questions that I want to cover. Okay. I hear, I hear there are reports of Dame Willard, uh, wanting out of Portland and potentially wanting to either go to the Knicks or the Sixers. I've heard those too. I also just want to shout out Matisse Steibel. Oh yeah. Showing up for Australia. Looking really good out there in, in the Olympics. I wish we had another international player showing up at the Olympics for Australia, but you know. You would think. Ty- Tybal blocking KD and recruit and recruiting Lillard in the same game, basically. Yeah, I'd love to see it. So uh, apparently, Australia just produces like elite defensive guys, and not just a good defensive performance too, Jackson. I mean, he was balling out on the offensive side too. You love to see it. Oh yeah, and that's and that's. Brief. I actually want to. I have a point on that. I I actually wanted Ben to play for that reason. I feel like he would got get back into a rhythm, kind of like, you know, I guess he just needed some time off from basketball. I don't know. I just he just didn't well, want to. You want to take a time apart, but I feel like oh, the Olympics is one of those things where it's like, all right, you can take your mind off, kind of just get in a little bit of a rhythm and just have some fun with it, honestly, no well, matter what, what happens. At the end of the season, they asked Magic Johnson, like, what Ben Simmons needs to do. And he said, just play basketball, whether it's like pickup yeah. games or like, you know, the Olympics or something. Play it for fun. Basketball. Just do it for fun, honestly. His, uh, his $17.5 million mansion in L.A., no basketball mm. court. <laughs> I, I mean, come on, thing. dude. Yeah, he's, at, he's playing pool basketball instead of real basketball. <laughs> Oh that pool God. does look sick, though. <laughs> yeah. E- either way, so so my question's right. I think Jackson just said it because the rumors came up. Is Dame possible? And if so, what will it take? I think Dame is possible. I think he wants to come to the Sixers. I think uh, they're going to trade him to a team that he wants to go to. I think the big problem is going to be outbidding the Knicks. I think the Knicks, uh, I heard that they can just absorb his salary so that if they trade him to the Knicks, yeah. they don't need to like match salaries like they would with us. And they have a lot of picks. I think we could get it done, though. Still, I say if Ben's okay. part of the trade, then that then that salary matches a lot closer. But yeah, I mean, we gotta have to use a couple of those late bench or low bench yeah, guys but... and some picks. Probably, you would hate to see like Max here, Matisse get packaged in a deal like that too. But I just think a... I think in this situation, if Dame's on the table, we have to be safe in knowing that. Daryl Morey is going to try literally everything he can to get Dame to get it done. Yeah, I, I mean, I personally got to the point where it's like, because I know we said like, who are we holding on to no matter what? I mean, if you're getting Dame, it's kind of like, all right, Morey, do what do what it takes. I mean, send the house if you have to, um, just to get it done. But I guess my question is then, with the, from the Knicks, who would they be sending that's making the deal, you know, sexy? I mean, is it Randall? Like, I I guess who nah, is it? It's Barrett. It's, it's Barrett. Okay. That and probably and just like, draft picks because and yeah, they have a lot of high. Their draft picks are going to be a lot more valuable than our draft picks. Okay, yeah. and I guess that's something that the Blazers are probably are looking at as far as the future. I mean, if yeah, they're letting Dane go, it's a rebuild at, at that point. Yeah, Jackson, do you um have any insight on any uh, draft prospects? No, I do not for this year. I mean, we have such a low draft like stock this year. I wasn't really paying attention to it. Yeah, I mean, it's really just hoping that you can get some guys that can go to the, the, the G League, just kind of grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get just into developing it. I think, players. I think yeah. as the draft gets closer, we'll start to analyze that for the podcast. We'll probably. go a little bit deeper. But so so let me uh, give you guys a couple follow-up questions then. So is a current, because a lot of talks have come up about this this week, is a current All-Star possible to get – you know, trading Ben for a current All Star, well, yeah. or or will it have to be, you know, a past All Star or a potential future All Star that's not quite there yet, but he has the potential to get there? Well, I think as this off season has been, uh, you know, moving forward, 
I think at the start, I didn't think we were going to trade Ben, but I think as it's going deeper into the offseason, I think it's more and more likely that we will trade Ben. And yeah. I think one of, like, De'Aaron Fox, SGA, uh, or, like, Just Sexton, of, yeah. or, like, Dan Lillard, we could get one of them, potentially. And hopefully on the younger one side. One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> well, I, I, don't think, I think you're really undervaluing Shay. Gilders Alexander, dude. No, no, I mean, I like him. I'm just saying, obviously, Dame. Compared like, to, well, compared to any of those, you know, guys, you know, that's like, next yeah. year. But I yeah. mean, I, th- I heard that De'Aaron Fox is off the table. I don't think the Kings would be willing to part with him, but they would be willing to part with like Buddy Heald. And I don't think that that's enough. That's not a deal it. we want. Absolutely not. So, so Jackson, you're saying the, the range of like what we could do, you know, it could be, you know, SGA, who, who's got the potential to be, you know, become an all star as a young player. Well, he, he's absolutely um, going to be an all-star. Okay, so I mean, if it's a definite, then okay. I mean, that's something to consider. He, scored too- like, he was scoring like twenty-five points per game on like forty-three percent threes. Okay, so I so so I mean, you got a wide range there of what you could get, at least in your your opinion, from a guy like that to Dame. I mean, yeah, end up with somebody like that. I mean, I I, I think we got to think about Sixers. What what the Sixers got to do is evaluate what do we need to put around Joel. Dude. That's going to get this team to the to the finals and, and get us, you know, a win. In the you finals. only have a few more years and, to do that too. So and you have that short was, window. That's why I think getting Dame makes the most sense because yeah, I, he's still in his prime, obviously, after what we saw last year. And like he's like yeah. he's a perimeter shooter. He's a point guard. Like he's that's what we need on this team. Like you you needed. I mean, he. I don't know how good his facilitating is. I I know obviously he's really just a shooter, um, but. Really, what this team needs is just a, a, a guy who can help handle the ball and shoot. So closer and a killer. Yeah, really. And Dave Lillard, I feel like, is the definition of a closer, man. He'll oh, yeah. hit that. He'll drill yeah. it from like the logo. Dude, yeah. he, is, yeah. he is like, he is one of the top three, like best, like perimeter shooters, probably like in the league right now. I mean, I feel mm-hmm. like Dame invented logo range. You know, I yeah. think based off of just hype shots, he's the best one in the league. Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'd say probably yeah. So I mean, yeah, I mean other. So for me, right, I feel like I'm I'm th- I'm trying to think about more of what type of player and when we get that type of player. Who does it ha- does it have to be? Just a, a close. I mean, other than Dame, right? Because obviously, like that's our number one priority of trying to get of who to try to get right now. But what type of player are we looking for? Is it just a shooter at this point? You know, um, I guess what kind of shooter? It's just it's just a point guard that can yeah. create their own shot. Traditional right. point guard. So a traditional point it's guard. A, it's a guy who can handle the ball and shoot. Like that's literally what we need. Do a bit, a little bit of both. Ben, Ben is not okay. that guy. You're not that guy, pal. <laughs> yeah, listen, Ben, you can play pickup with me and Jackson anytime. You know, anytime you want. But uh, <laughs> sounds like we're sending you, buddy. All right. One thing, um, one thing that's good to hear before I before we move on, I want to point out is that it seems like Ben's value is higher in the league currently than we thought it was going to be like closing the yeah, season. Like, it does seem like we've been really down on him, but I don't think other people are. I think, well, I think I, other teams I, think like, man, this guy's so like his potential is through the roof. And like, I think that's what we saw at first. And then now, now they're going to think they're going to try to do it and see if it works well, out. For them. It, they, and they always play that game of like, Oh, uh, you know, I, I think, I don't think we were that down on him. Cause I think his value was going to go back up. We knew that. I think these teams are trying to probably trying to act now. If I were to guess, why his value is a little bit lower to get, uh, you know, a little bit more bang for the buck. But, but yeah, so it, it's just a matter of, of when, I think, at this point. I think we got to go out and do it, though. Maury's just got to get the right deal. So, all right, let's do it, guys. Let's go into the defensive side of your Philadelphia Eagles, right? So we got Nick fist bumping. Um, before we talk into any specific individuals right we're going to sit on this slide a little bit and oh hey nick um uh and just talk about what's going to be making this defense successful right what's going to you know kind of what we talked about last week with the offensive line being the biggest impact type of position you know on this team you know we're going to talk about what are the critical factors to actually getting wins this year and maybe putting us more over the 500 mark compared to below the 500 mark so for me, um, it's the D-line. Again, it's it's kind of just building in the trenches. Um, a lot of older guys here, but at the same time, I think we have a lot of depth. So that's the key, as we said uh, you know, last week on the offense. You know, it's all about a fresh rotation. So not just getting the right type of players that are, 
you know, getting sacks, but also guys that are coming in fresh and being able to make big plays. Um, because, I mean, the most sacks that we had from one player last year was Brandon Graham and eight sacks for the year. He made the Pro Bowl. Congrats to him for the first time. But with that said, you know, you really get, you just need guys coming in, being like those Chris Long type players, you know, stripping the ball and forcing fumbles at the end of the day and causing turnovers. So for me, uh, if there's anything that I would have to say about this defense and what they need to do this year, it's just generating turnovers, getting the ball back in Jalen's hands, getting him opportunities on a short field to score and kind of gain that confidence um, just to be able to develop as a player too. So even, you know, talking a little offense here because I feel like, you know, back in 2017, a long way from 2017, right? where we had 19 interceptions that year as a defense. We had eight last year in 2020. So different, two different stories, you know, from where we were to where we are now. So for you guys, right, what's the most important thing that this defense needs to do to be successful? I, I feel think, like go you go, Joe. All right. All right. Um, I, I think, like, you kind of hit it on the head a little bit with just, you know, getting turnovers and stuff. I think it's just overall strategy-wise. It's just about aggression. Like, I mean, the, the defense hasn't been aggressive, like, under Schwartz. Like, yeah. it's, it's really, they really had this, like, lax, like, lax kind of, like, you know, like, the bend, don't break thing. I think that only works when you have these, like, top-tier safeties and top-tier corners. I think, and we didn't have that, and I think you just didn't change the strategy, and I think that's why our defense has struggled so much. But I think we just need to go back to being aggressive, and I think Gannon's going to do that. Uh, he seems like that kind of guy who will, like, blitz when he wants, like, every time, if he wants to blitz, he'll do it. Um, yeah, I think it's just aggression. Like, I feel like every time last year, I just watched, I just watched the other teams have so much time in the pocket and so and and, and get these easy throws off for eight, nine, ten plus yards. Like, and it just pissed me off every time I watched that happen. I just think there needs to be more aggression and just more, just more contact. You know, like just be being on your, not just being around your man, be on your man. Like, make the play. And, and we've seen that it does work. It can work with the right set of players, the bend but don't break defense. I mean, in 2017, we I think we were 17th in the league for yards allowed passing. We were 18th in the league for passing yard touchdowns or passing touchdowns. So it, it works when you have the players that, you know, once you get to the red zone, you can cause a turnover or just a field goal. And you have a high-powered offense that can score, you know, if, if you're holding the, you know, the opponent to – just a field goal and you're scoring a touchdown on every drive that you get, you know, I mean, it works that way, but I think we have to switch it up. Go, go back to Jim Johnson. Go, let's go back to our 2004 days where we're just sending the package, sending the whole house. Um, engage eight. I yeah. like the, I like, yeah, yeah engage eight on that. Um, you know, just, just work off that aggression with the players you have now. And one thing I think with uh, Jim Schwartz was that he had, he had this like sort of like cocky attitude. I feel like where he was like, I'm doing what I'm doing, and it's good, and it's gonna work, and I'm not gonna change it. And it yeah. was, it was that bend yeah. don't break strategy, but yeah. it just wasn't working. So it was sort of just like bend and break. He strategy. never, he never changed. <laughs> he never yeah. until you break. It was bent. It was bend don't break, and now it's bent and broken. So like, my system works. My and system works. I'm gonna die on this hill. <laughs> I don't want to like. I don't want to trash Jim Schwartz too much because Jim Schwartz was not the yeah. reason we were losing games. It was absolutely our offense. No, you're but right. It, at the same time, like, our defense wasn't, like, performing, like you guys were saying, to the levels of 2017. I feel like our offensive line, our defensive line kept getting hurt. And I'm hoping we have, like, more sort of depth than we have had in the past few years. And I'm hoping they can stay healthy, yeah. put a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks, and maybe that'll cause turnovers again. Yeah, I, I think that's where it starts, right? It starts with the defensive line. I mean, you got to rush the quarterback and allow for no time at all for him to get that ball off, especially when you're in this division of receivers, you know, like Galladay, Shepard, and Slayton on one team. You got Gallup and CeeDee Lamb and Cooper on another. So, I mean, when you're dealing with all these players, you know, if you're allowing for even, you know, uh, well, Dak, Dak and Slayton, I mean, I, you know, he can, he can, you know, play pretty well. But give him time and, you know, he's going to be looking like a, a pro bowler. You know, yeah, and you, if you give them time, those receivers are getting open no matter who's covering them. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't blame the defense at that, or at least the, you know, the defensive Quarters. backs at that point. So, but yeah. <laughs> all right, let's deep dive into this front four. So, all let's right, do let's do it. Okay, so, well, before we do that, uh, Foles is going to leave, and we're just going to look at the depth real quick. All right, guys. So, 
like uh, like Jackson was saying a little bit, you know, I mean, I I really like the depth on the front four. We'll talk a little bit more about the players themselves, but when you get a rotation, at least a starting five of Cox, Graham, Barnett, Sweat working in there, and Hargraves, um, you know, you're you're getting in fresh legs that are are going to come in and make plays. So that that's kind of the thing is, what can you do to generate the most turnovers? Whether it's a forced fumble or just causing you know guys like big play slay and Anthony Harris to come in and you know get eight or six picks in a season. Um, when you have that front four there to help you, the, you know, generate those turnovers, you have the great guys in the back here with McLeod, Harris, Slay, and, you know, Maddox can make plays too. I mean, I have a lot of faith in him. Um, I don't think he's a starting corner, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But the depth is there. I think, it, I think it's there, you know, maybe other than the linebacking core and, you know, the corners, but... Like I said, we'll get into that. So how is this going to work, right? So I'll bring up the front four. Okay, got the starters here. Well, Can you're talking about... real quick. You're calling it the front four, but from that depth chart, it might be the front seven or the front eight, dude. <laughs> seven or eight of those players could start on uh, most teams. I won't. I won't go that far. I would say maybe. Yeah, but I mean, we're only going to put yeah. at least four six. On... At least six can we're start. We're only going to put four on the on the on the. You're saying six can start. I mean, Josh Sweat and. Uh, Kerrigan were both, could easily both start. So here, here's the thing, because I want to talk about, you know, and and these four guys here may not be on the boom lineup leader or bust list, but, um, well, one person might be. But, you know, I, I think this is probably where we have the depth the most, because to Jackson's point, I think at least five, six of those players can start. You got to remember, it's probably better when some of these guys are rotation guys, though. So here's how this is going to work, though. For each position group, we're going to discuss and kind of go back and forth and see, you know, uh, kind of break down and analyze who's really the leader of this group. And that's not from a talent perspective. That's more just leadership in general, just who's the guy who's going to be commanding this group. Um, and then also, boom, just from a talent perspective, who's got the most upside going into this season. And then bust maybe based on history of what we've gone through with that person or whatever, um, or this year alone, you know, he's just not going to play to his potential. Maybe he's on his decline. So... Um, with that said, you know, we have the depth here. I would have to say, you guys have any guesses or any, any, uh, you pin in these guys to any one of these? It's so you know, hard to like, so I far. think Fletcher Cox at this point is the lineup leader. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he, he's the lineup leader. Yeah. Unquestionable. But he also might be on that, on that downswing too. Like, not yet. He's not old enough. Jackson's not putting there. It's okay. more about the, the injuries. I feel like. It's true. I think, yeah. I think. Yeah. It's just so like I I mean obviously Fletcher Cox is the best player on our defensive line, but it's so hard to put any of these guys in like a boomer bust spot. It's like you don't like, if they're healthy, they're all like pretty. I got pretty one good guy in mind. They're except, all boobs. Except, except for except for Derek Barnett, he's a bust. Uh, <laughs> well, I think Josh Sweat could have a breakout year for sure. I'm really yep. excited to see him potentially just. I think I think spot. I think I think Josh Sweat's yeah. gonna start this year. I'm 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 glad you said it, Flay, because he's my boom this year. I mean. He's he's got the most upside. I think that's why Barnett's sweating. That's that's why you see the title there. It's because it, I think he deserves the starting spot in a Sirianni type team where competition, competition, competition. It's kind of like, all right, I think he could take this winning spot. Needless to say, I mean, regardless, you know, um, you know, it's a rotational type position, and he's going to be. They're both going to be getting a lot of time. I think he earned the start, though. To be honest, I think. I think. I think. I think both of them are going to have booms this year. They're both going to be playing a lot. I think both they're both going to be playing well. I mean, I I know Derek Barnett. I mean, you'd love to see it. A lot of the times, yeah. and he hasn't played as well as everybody in Philadelphia's hope. But he's been playing good, and he's made a lot of good plays for us. I don't think is, he's definitely not a, a bust. Is this another Philly breaks the guy moment? I don't think he's broken. I think he's just been hurt a couple times. I think every time he, he was the one who recovered the fumble in the Super Bowl. Yeah, no, he was as a rookie. I'll, I'll give him that, and you know, I'll remember that forever. But you got to remember, he was picked at the 14th spot. I know, I know. But everybody was saying the same things about um, Brandon Graham when he was drafted. You know, like they were saying, they were calling True. him a bust for a few years, and then he had developed. I think, I think Derek Barnett has shown, you know, that he has potential to be a good player, and I think he could also be in the boom category as well. Okay, all right. Brandon Brandon Graham's leaving at some point, and these two could be uh, eventually. Are two starting I mean, I, defensive yeah, ends. I think you do got to think about that too. I mean, th maybe that's why you do hold on to Barnett. I think a lot of talks have come up of do we trade him, you know, to try to get something, why he does have a little bit of value here. Sweat had six sacks 
uh, last year. Barnett had five and a half, so he he jumped them a bit. I, I just think that Sweat's proven himself last year, um, just using the eye test, too. But. Well, you can't argue that Sweat's an absolute savage. Yeah. It's so. like, it's like Josh right. Sweat, I feel like, wants it more, and then, like, and Derek I feel like Bar- it's Derek the attitude Barnett, or something. And, and Derek Barnett yeah. has, like, this, like, he's, like, the number one pick. He's just, like, I think he's, like, he's not, got some not, swag not, from not the one Super Bowl season left over. Yeah, I, I just think he has that, like, uh, first round pick mentality where he's, like, he doesn't have to work as hard. He's just, like, I'm that guy. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't think it's going to work with Nick Sirianni. I don't think that kind of attitude works. So you, are you guys all agreed on Cox for the for the lineup leader? Well, it's, uh, it's like a, it's like a duo of Cox and uh, Brandon Graham. Like Brandon Graham, okay. have to give him the props for being like at least co leader of the defense. I'm saying I'm saying the guy from the Washington football. I don't team. think he's going to just come in and. You, are you... Yeah, that's yeah, why him, stupid, dude? dude. This old freaking because user, dude. No, I, no way. I, I said it from the beginning. Why, why we would go out and get this guy is because of because of his leadership. I feel like he's another type of Chris Long coming in, and you know, he just he at least teaches these young guys up. I, again, it's it's not going to be like okay. He probably won't There's be the most two prominent. Young guys. He's well, he won't be the most prominent young leader in the you know or leader in the room, but compared to. It's it's probably more Graham. I will give you that. But I I feel like Cox is just he's like a pure monster dominance guy. He's not like a a mentor as much. I mean that's like the vibe that I kind of got. But I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm not the person in in the locker room. But I just feel like Kerrigan has that leadership ability. I just I feel mean, like our wrong. defense just... runs on swag, and if you're running on swag, why the heck are you putting Ryan Kerrigan in the swag? <laughs> you're you're saying Kerrigan doesn't have that swag. <laughs> he doesn't so have the swag. The, the, swag swag yeah, the Eagles, the Eagles the defense does run on swag when when they're good. Like when they when we have a good defense, you could just tell that, that Fletcher <laughs> Cox uh, crawl after yeah, yeah, post back. Yeah. All right. Fletcher there. Cox, he 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 crawls after the sack. He tosses on that turnover. He's a fucking bear, uh, dude. He's a fucking bear. Swag squad city, dude. So I okay. For All the right. bus right. side, I'm gonna say uh, no one, at least in this. No one. Uh, Terry Barnett is a bus. Group. I'm with. I'm with say, on that one. At worst, I'll say Derek Barnett okay. comes out net neutral. Uh, but he can't. He can't right, be net neutral though. That's not, my point. He's not he a bus. That. But for a first round pick, he's a bus. <laughs> exactly. He can't be that for where he was picked. That's that's my. I mean, he's yeah. He's not like a total de- degenerate. He's, can't do he, nothing for our team. He's like an but, 85, 86 on Madden like type player. He's not bad at all. We, we got to fact, we, we fact check that. First off, gotta... don't take Madden ratings at any type of real life value. I'm just trying to like, if we were rating him, he'd probably be like in the mid 80s. Like he's good. Oh my God. He's okay. Um, Five sacks like a year. Ocho Cinco like... getting pissed off. The one he gets year. hurt. That's why. Everybody gets hurt. <laughs> well, they're missing games. They're going to get less sacks. I Either know, way. Everybody gets hurt. You know, like. Either way, they're all going to be good against the rush. Especially we know that for a fact. We need them to be good against the pass rush. Um, this is in order to just lift up our team. Group for sure. But yeah, I mean, I am the most confident without a doubt in this position group as opposed to everything else. Yeah, so, you can't be mad at this position group at all. Let's move on to something we're not as confident about. You know, the linebacking Yikes. core. Um, you know, read the headline. More like line backups, maybe. Not, not exactly, though. I think there's, you know, we can see some some flashes in some of these players, you know, on screen, right? So if we were to put Alex Singleton anywhere on this list from boom, lineup leader, or bust, 120 combined tackles last year, 75 of those were solo tackles, 45 assisted. We lose Nate Gary, which is in a, wasn't a much of a loss. <laughs> in that game. Um, and we gain Eric Wilson. So that's a huge plus, not much of a minus, you know, with a, really not a minus at all with losing Gary. But... If you were to put Singleton, you know, a guy who we didn't expect much of, he was just another guy in the lineup, you know, we'll see, whatever, um, but comes out with 120, you know, combined tackles, um, where would you place him this year? I think he could have some boom potential. Okay. No, you know, if he if he comes out and plays bad, I'm just going to, you know, my thoughts would be like, yeah, it's about where I would put Alex Singleton at, but I think he has the potential to, Take it to the next level, and I think having a guy like Eric Wilson next to him only helps yeah. make him a little bit better. I feel like he's an easy boom, dude. He was I, easy for boomer. last year. For last year, like he was one of the I think lone bright spots on the defense. 
We had yep. such a bad linebacking core. He got 120 t- tackles. That's like unheard of. That's ridiculous how many tackles he got. It's great, man. Yeah. Leader of the team. If you were to talk, to, like, if you were to just like take it as like what Jackson says, you would think we have the greatest defense in the league. I swear to God. <laughs> well, for this player, every, every player is I mean, a boom. Every player is amazing. I can't believe I mean, that. That's not. That's not. That's not my thought. We, I just think. A, I think we have a good defensive defense. line. I think we have a good defensive line, and I think Alex Singleton is like a good prospect. He's like he got a lot of tackles. He played well. He's not. He's definitely like at least a serviceable starter. He got some picks. He was like tackling like an absolute fiend. Yeah, he's a serviceable starter who was our best linebacker. Serviceable. <laughs> okay. Uh, if we have, 100, if we have a linebacker that can even like know how to play lineback- the linebacker position, that's like that's a boom for us. I was gonna say, yeah, Nate Gary didn't even know how to tackle, so. He was, Listen, Brit, I mean, Brits, he led the team in tackles, so not just the linebackers. I know, so I, know. I, I mean, that's not serviceable. I mean, that's – he was a ball hawk, dude. Whenever you saw, you know, wherever the play was going, he was there. I mean, it, he made, like, good plays too, good strong tackles. Um, so, listen, I, I agree. This was a tough one for me where I placed him. I put him as the lineup leader just because he knows the offense more than Eric Wilson at this point. Well, I guess he – or defense. I guess he doesn't. Oh, yeah. I was I guess put Wilson. I guess it's changing with uh, Gannon coming in, so maybe it, maybe it is more Eric Wilson. I think um, from the depth chart, um, Singleton is more of a weak outside linebacker. So I I don't know. I, I think he's boom or lineup leader. He's obviously not a bust, um, but you know I, I'm just I just want to be careful with the linebackers. I feel like you just got to place the guy who is the leader in that middle linebacker spot commanding the defense. Like, don't just put the most talented guy there if he can't be a leader. Because I feel like I go back to the Jordan Hicks years. When he was a rookie, he had he, he really excelled um, as an outside linebacker. And I think we moved him to middle linebacker. I, I think he was just better as a, as a killer. Go out there, get tackles, just find the ball. I feel like you just got to be careful with this sort of thing. You know, don't judge it based on talent. Judge it based on who really can command that defense. Are you trying so, to say we put Singleton in the middle linebacker spot over Wilson? No, I, I mean, I, I just want the guy who's the best leader. And I guess I was thinking, like, oh, he's been here for a year, maybe knows it a little bit more. I'm, I'm, I'm torn between this. I, whoever's just the best guy who knows the defense and can run the defense, that's all I want in that spot. I think it could be Wilson or Singleton at this point, just one or the other. I think the one thing they have to keep in mind is that we have, like, a completely different defense this year. So I don't know. It's his, like you know, experience being on the team last year necessarily, like, that important. That value? Running the defense. Value at it? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can judge that yet. I think that's a hard thing to judge. Um, I think that's what I was basing it off of, but it's it's not a lot to base it off of, so. I, I also think Eric Wilson's coming off a career year and has a, is the kind of player who is just going to be a beast no matter where he is, you know, as far as team-wise. So yeah. just him coming to the birds. Dude, I... I was actually just watching some yeah. uh, some Viking stuff, and they were really high on him uh, last year. So it was a really cool scoop. Good contract, too. Yeah, yeah, I feel like if he played middle linebacker, we should keep him in the middle linebacker position. I, th- I feel like um, Singleton, he was like outside linebacker last year, right? And he did well there. So. so let's just keep him there. He, if he's doing good there, let's not switch things up. Let's keep letting him do his thing. Yeah, I, I think, you know, if I were to edit this slide, it'd probably be Eric Wilson, boom, and then Eric Wilson also lineup leader. <laughs> so, I mean, he's 26 years old. I think he plays the middle linebacker spot. He had 122 combined tackles last year, three interceptions, three sacks. So this, I- I'm really glad we got this guy. I mean, I don't know why the Vikings let him go. I don't know why the Vikings let Anthony Harris go. I mean, I guess he's getting a little bit up there. Not not really. But, I don't um, think so. But uh, I-, I think we got a steal of a deal. It's a one-year deal, right, Flay? Um, it's a one-year deal for Wilson, one-year three and a quarter mil. Yeah, so this is a one-year five mil. I mean, maybe you want would have wanted that to be a longer deal just because he has a high potential and get him for a cheaper price. But either way, I'm happy we have him. We finally have a surefire guy that I that I think you know is a definite starter and a guy that we have confidence in for the first time in a while. So one thing I have we have to point out though is I don't think we should be like overly high on the linebackers. I think the linebackers are still like easily our least talented position on the defense and will probably be a problem. No, I I stick with that point. I I would say I'm high on these two individual players. 
and that's it. I, I, I think that's it. I mean, we do we are in a league now where linebackers, you know, the value of them aren't as important with it being like a, you know, a, a passing league and, you know, it, it kind of changing the dynamic a little bit. And I think the Eagles know that. We just need they, linebackers that can cover. It, we just need linebackers that can cover. Um, and, and I mean, I, I still think tackling is important. I, I don't think Eagles have had good tacklers in, in years. And that, I mean, I could speak, I'm speaking to the entire team. I, put, um, I mean, they put no that. draft capital in the linebacker position at all. Never. Ever. Ever. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm putting Sean Bradley, this is the other guy over here, as a bust just because I, I wanted to fill the category. But I, I'm not, I'm not going to say he's going to be an actual bust. I mean, pick, he's, he's, a 20, he's a 20 20 six round pick. Uh, it's kind of like what Jackson said. I mean, I think the point at the end of the story, weakest part of the defense. Um, with that said, it's probably the least impact type position group. <clears throat> For defense, but you know we're we're not that high on this being like oh my god, yeah. it's a game changing. No, you know, I think we just made group. a solid improvement from last year again. Yeah, I would agree with that. Last year, I think we made a solid improvement from the year prior, so it's a nice two year progression, and hopefully we keep on that trend. The team I think, has for sure gotten better talent wise from last year. It's one thing we can say. Yeah. The whole team. One thing we can note. I think we improved a little bit, but I do think we're still going to be letting up like some large runs due to this linebacker group every once in a while. All right, guys. And with that, I, I think we're going to take a short break. I know we're near the end, but uh, we're going to take a short break. Britt probably has to poop anyway. And uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> Two minutes. All right, guys, welcome back. We're talking a little bit more on the defensive side of the Eagles, but now it's time to get into the defensive backs. So slaying company, right? But we also bring over Anthony Harris. Um, we have uh, Avante Maddox as the other starting corner opposite of Darius Slay. So, again, not as worried about this group as much as the linebackers, but still we know we need something a little bit more than Avante Maddox right now. So if you guys are... Worried about anything? What is it? Who is it? You know, what do we need to do? Well, I feel like we can all be in agreement on the fact that Slay, Anthony Harris, and McLeod, all good players, and we're all happy to have all three of them. Avante yeah. Maddox, I don't know so much. Yeah, he's uh, not that yeah. great. Not a starter. Definitely not as a starter. I wouldn't yeah. mind him coming off as a as a yeah. third. Or he could be the slot, but yeah. Because I, I, I think we're all in agreement there. I think we just need another guy. And I think Stevie Nelson, you know, come on over. As Slay has tweeted, you know, to you. Because um, it, can't, it can't be Maddox, but I think he can be that slot guy. He's, he can be, you know, a guy who gets – he probably could be a guy who gets a lot of interceptions and, and play like a Patrick Robinson of 2017, you know, put in a job where you're not on the outside, you know, getting your ankles broken. We're just in a job that, you know, covers the crosses and slants. I don't know field. about that. I I do think like Robinson I think he can be he was a playmaker. In the slot was a beast. I think whenever I see Avante Maddox play, he just doesn't turn around. He just follows the guy, and if he gets a block, it's because he's like, uh, uh, and it like hits him in the helmet <laughs> or something. Dude, I, <laughs> I, I also feel like I mean you're right. I I just feel like it's so hard to be like an effective, effective corner when you're like five foot nine and one hundred and eighty yeah. pounds or whatever. Like he's so small. Like. Is like literally, like, we are all taller than him. <laughs> how, I'd how, rather have Craven LeBlanc uh, on the outside than I would uh, Fonte Maddox. Where's Craven? I'd rather back. have Cravion. Wait, I'd rather have freaking Kayvon Wallace out there than him. <laughs> yeah, honest, I, I, I think we're gonna see Zach McPherson a lot on the outside as opposed to um, yeah Maddox, unless we make that trade and we get uh, whoever we were talking about. A lot of people are up on him, but I mean, you gotta remember he is a rookie, fourth rounder, not. It's not like he's a first round coming in, you know, Pat or Patrick Sertain Jr. type of scenario. So, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm a little, a little, iffy, I, a little iffy on that. I do want him to get playing time. You also got Kayvon Wallace. I think playing I think behind. He has potential. Kayvon I mean, Wallace. he was supposed... has more potential than. I, isn't Maddox like a fifth round like got, player who's just been bad his whole time? I don't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I... But so is so is Kayvon Wallace. He's like I mean, Maddox player. had his like flashes his first year though. I think that's what people are holding on to. I, I just think you got to take. I mean, he's plus he's got the experience. I put him in the slot. Um, I, I'm just not there to give Zek like the the start and put all that pressure on him yet. 
Um, I say throw I, him out I, there. I say just bring out another guy or bring in another guy. I should say. I say throw throw McPherson out there. Honestly, throw him out there from the get. Yeah, honestly, just anything's better than Maddox for me. I just feel like Maddox is just like an open receiver. <laughs> I agree. Honestly, it's if what he's it looks there like. To catch the ball Dude, on game day Sunday. If if but Maddox is covering someone. That guy's gonna score a touchdown. <laughs> it's, it's it's a no-brainer. Just throw it to the guy Maddox is on. Is that how you make your fantasy around, decisions, you Fritz? Yeah, that's how you make your fantasy that's pickups this year. That's all I hit the waiver wire. Who's covering? Who's um, Maddox covering this week? It's, well, I, did, I I agree that in the past people have like said yeah. that he's good, but even when they were saying he's good, I was watching the games and he just didn't look good. He just I don't know. There's there's what, something there. There's some disconnect him? with like. I think he just thinks he's supposed to follow the receiver. He doesn't realize he's supposed to actually defend Look at the, the ball. ball. Yeah. <laughs> no, you do see it a lot. I'll, I'll give it to you. I, yeah, I feel like he's always caught behind. I hope he's receiver. your busket, but you don't have like a hot take for us. <laughs> he's the boom. Oh, <laughs> uh, look at this right. face. Look at his face. <laughs> Speaking of waiver wires, Light up right? Lineup leader. Lineup leader. <laughs> about the I, I've been off base with you guys today. Maybe we'll see. We'll find out. But speaking of waivers, right? And speaking of fantasy, I had this guy on fantasy because Jackson, I think, decided. Hey guys, you can pick a coach and a defensive player in your fantasy league. That was league. two yep, years yep. ago, wasn't it? That one. That was two years ago. The defensive player and was cool. You had Harris. I, I had Harris. That was the year he had six interceptions. <laughs> again, again, I won back to back years. Are you are you guys surprised by this? Are you are you? You surprised? had friggin' what's his name? What the hell is his running back name for the Saints? All right, wait. Enough Kamara. Bragging. Kamara. Either way. Kamara. Either way. Either way. All right. It's all right. I'll take away the bragging parts of the show. Okay. One um, point I wanted to point out about Harris, because I think a lot of people yeah. were a little up- upset that he, he was coming from the Vikings off of a year where he had no interceptions. Um, but the Vikings had the worst pass rush in the league last year, and the Eagles had the second best. So also, I think, the, year, we really? the year before that, he was the number yeah, Bruce, one. That's why I was shaking my head when you were talking about our defensive line. I was like, our defensive line was like really, really good last year. Like Oh, no, it was the best part of our pick. team, for sure. It, it was the running game was where we had a ton of problems, and our secondary, besides Slay, like, couldn't cover anyone. Well, I was yeah. – the only thing I said about the line is that, like, it's, like, injury-ridden. Well, Anthony Harris, two years ago, was, like, the best safety in the entire league, and we just got him on a $5 million a year deal. That's such – A prove-it deal, basically. That's- yeah. yeah, I mean, Which, yeah, but he doesn't either, even really no. need to prove it. We got lucky that we. He yeah, exactly. He, we we kind of caught him on a dip. So, uh, if you were to put Harris anywhere, then what bucket do you drop him in? Boom. I put him in the boom bucket only because I think boom. Slay is the lineup leader. Based nah, on his... I you, okay. I think McLeod might be the lineup leader, dude. McLeod's been here a while. McLeod's got that. I like that McLeod. Exudes, I like, that little, I like, like that McLeod, dude. Leadership, yeah, he's got good vibes only. I I, I would like it's to see him. Always freaking I can see it. I wouldn't be mad about it. I think Slay is just the kind of guy who who definitely has the the fire him up kind of mentality too, where fire he can get up. in the middle of that circle and get everyone going. All right, well, I, let's let, let him drift. Slay, yo, Slay, Darius yeah. Slay needs to have a good year this year. Slay has to. Darius Slay could be the leader of the cornerbacks, and McLeod could be the leader of the safeties. <laughs> yeah. Nah, dude, yeah, one I mean, secondary. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of one secondary group. They're kind of all grouped together. Oh my gosh. Any, I put Slay at the boom. Safety can play corner, probably. Ooh, I put, so I put, I put Slay at the boom. boom. So so listen, eight interceptions. That is so in questionable. 20, eight interceptions in 2017. <laughs> the pa- the pass rush and the pass rush death. It, questionable after last year, but I mean they're putting him on the best guy. So with the assumption that they're going to get him help, plus you got Anthony Harris scaring you know here in the footsteps. Uh, Metcalf, you're not doing it again. I'm sorry. He's going to get picks this year. I'm going to say I'm going to say three picks for Slay this year. I'm I'm up on him. I think he still has a lot of game left. I don't think he's near the end. You know, maybe he is, is on the decline, but that decline is still right at the top of the peak from what he was coming down from. I think. Um, I don't I don't think he's as much of that hype up guy as you said, Flay. I mean, may, I I think he could be probably, but I don't think he's much of that lineup leader as much as he has the talent. Um, he's a ball hawk. He's big play Slay. He has that name for a reason. I think uh, I think that comes back this year. I, I I feel like I'm turning into like the the downer on the uh, for the Eagles, and which is a complete opposite. Usually, I'm so high on them. Usually, um, you're up. Yeah, but like I hate when people say that. Oh, he's covering the best guy. He's the best corner. He's gonna cover the best guy. He's been covering the best guy his whole career. You know, like I I, I don't see that as an excuse for like he he played good that last year. He didn't play what we expected him to do. Like obviously one pick is like you know we thought and it was like I think it was like towards the end of the year you got the the pick too, 
So it's like he didn't really make any plays. Like he was supposed to be big play slay. He didn't really do that. I, I, I he needs to play good this year. He needs to have a good year. Like a solid. I think it, I agree yeah. with you, Caputi. I think our whole I think our secondary is going to eat this year. I think we can see a team total yeah. of at least ten picks. <laughs> Yeah, I think that, we, might be, that we, might be that that could be that's a bold prediction, but I mean I think if our defensive line comes out and plays like they played last last year, and I think if we do shore up that other cornerback spot, I think Slay gonna have a big year, Harris gonna eat, and I think you can get some good production out of both your backups and hopefully get that starter, whether it's Nelson or someone else, coming in and, and also eaten. I just guys back the there. Boy, I, the have high, I have high expectations for the not like not like not like um, I don't think our defense is like amazing, but I have high expectations because I think they need to step up this year, and I think they are going to step up. I just feel like I'm, the I'm fact hoping... that we had like no safeties last year, and now that we're going to have McLeod and Harris, is going to have like such a huge impact on our like ability to like cover players and our uh, like. I think our secondary is just going to do a lot better. I think Slay has a cool name. I think Slay is a player who's not going to like There's Jackson change again. the defense. Sorry, it's a Jackson take. But if he I've is going to like. If you have a good defense, Slay's going to just improve that defense a lot like more. And I think with the safeties being back and being better than they were last year, I think Slay is going to absolutely feast. I, I, yeah, I think he's going to have the whole buffet. I, I think when you have a team around him, the talent around him, he's, he's going to get his. And, what, and you guys, what, what would you guys put as uh, total, total interceptions for the unit? For the for team, the, for the for those so, four guys. So let me, let me give you a secondary unit. Let me give Seven. you this. Let me give you a scale, right? So 20, 2017, we were like the lead leaguer, league leader. Um, we had nineteen. Last year was bad. We had eight. So I would say for these guys, I, I would expect. I I want I want like twelve. Twelve picks. Some progression. I would like to see 10, 10 plus. How many of those picks last year, Caputi? Was that all the secondary, or was that the total team? Like, was there any linebacker? That, that was that was the team total. So you had, gotcha. you, yeah. You so maybe probably like had a couple linebacker or something. I think just from our secondary yeah. in total, I would like to see ten picks at least. I mean, from the guys you see here, uh, two total. So one Slay, one McLeod. And you got to remember, McLeod did play thirteen games. He was out after the Saints game with that knee injury, so he was there for a good portion of it. Um, you need you needed definitely needed them there for the full season. I mean that that's the thing. You look at this group and you're like, holy shit, this is a good group of guys. I think the depth, you know, is kind of the question mark where it's like you don't have if somebody gets injured, we could be in a bad spot very quickly. So that's that's the thing to remember. But if we're going lineup leader, uh, I guess we're I guess we're dropping everybody first. Oh my we're god, go don't yeah, don't put Maddox if, in that. If uh, <laughs> if we're going line, don't worry, don't worry. I'm I'm smart. I'm smart. <laughs> we're going we're going bust. We're going bust. Well, here. um. He, yeah, I mean, he's caught from behind all the time. It, it just the eye test alone, you can see he's just he doesn't look like he's ready to play football. I think I think if anything, put him in the slot spot and just try to build him back up. But if anything, you know, look for somebody else. You just we all agree on that on that point. But the the lineup leader, I was torn a little bit, right? Because you got a guy Anthony Harris who seemed to be the lineup leader over in Vikings territory now coming over here, but. You know, McLeod got the start as far as holding Nick's list up today, so he gets the start on the lineup Woo! leader category. Um, I, I think he's just he's stepping it up, right? Jenkins went out, and I think he's just the guy. He's the vet who's been here for a while. Um, he he knows he has he has Slay and Harris and a little bit of older guys, but as far as a guy who's really developing and picking guys up, I think it's going to be McLeod. And I feel like McLeod sort of used Jenkins as like a mentor figure, for and I think that. he's learned from him. And he's yeah. like sort of like has evolved into like more of that leadership role because of that. Yeah. I mean, you got to remember McLeod was the guy who you, you saw the highlight of him like knocking out the one guy when he was on the Rams. But I think that was hit him as a young player. And now I feel like he's grown into that. Like, I think he could still do that. But I think he's also had a had a great friend in Jenkins who's kind of mentored him along the way. Yes. To be the leader of a defense. But um, but that doesn't mean I'm not putting Harris anywhere because I like that guy a lot. I mean, six it, interceptions. <laughs> he's he's, he's kind of right on the line. Um, it's not he, a bad problem to have like a couple leaders on in the secondary. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that's a quarterback's view right there. Slay yeah. and then Harris a little bit behind them. That, I mean, I, Mc, McLeod, Harris, Slay. That's that's gonna be scary. That's gonna be yeah, scary. We can, we can and it's like it's like a, it's like such a deadly trio, and then. You just have uh, then, Maddox no. over on the side, just awkwardly like, don't but, throw at me. They're all going to smile at him just like that, too. They're just looking at the quarterback like this. And actually, behind McLeod, you have Marcus Epps, 
he led the team with picks with two last year. I was I saw that and I was like, <laughs> yeah, our defense, our, what? Our right time, right place. Tragic. Um, but we'll we'll see. I, I think it comes down to the pass rush. But now that you got a guy like Harris, I think he's he can be either. He can be a boom. He can be a lineup leader. He can be both at the same time. Monte Maddox, Definitely not the, the quarterbacks but. that we're going against. We should have a lot more picks. <laughs> Like he thought he's he thought he's got those eyes on the quarterback, dude. He's, he's, creeping, he's watching dude. him. He's creeping hard. He should be picking off Danny Dimes like twice a game, dude. Like, yeah. oh my god, yeah, no. So it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be a fun year. And with all that said, with all this hype on the Eagles and how confident we are about this team, uh, nine and eight or lower of a record. So. Yeah, they're still the birds. <laughs> it's, you know, they they're still, still in a bad spot. But it will always be sunny in Philadelphia. And on the Philly Escape podcast. So we're saying goodbye to you guys. Going back to Super Bowl year. Episode 11. But 17 and 0, as we always say. <laughs> Thank you guys for another fun podcast. Remember, it's Caputi. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for you guys. We'll see you next time on Philly Escape podcast. And 9 and 8, but also 17 and 0. Uh, see you guys. See ya. Oh, oh, oh. Peace. See ya. Launch see ya. and landed. Forgot.